Now that you have your file downloaded and unzipped, it's ready for use in your Sure Cuts a Lot program. Sure Cuts a Lot, or SCAL, uses two types of files. It uses SCUT files and SVG files. SCUT files are the files that are created when you make a project and save it within the Sure Cuts a Lot program. We will be working with an SVG file today. That's what we just downloaded. In order to import that, you come up here to your Import SVG button. You import SVGs, you open SCUT files. You need to remember the difference because you can't interchange them. It won't work. You'll get an error message. So to import the file, you either click on the Import SVG button right here, or you can also go to File, and there's the function there too. But the button's easy. Just click on it. Then you need to locate your file. Now mine is within my scale program. I have a My Vinyl Designer folder, and I open that in my alphabet too is right here. And I'm going to use the letter M. So pick the one that you want and click on it. Click open. And here it is. It's very small. Now over here in your properties box, this keep proportions box, check that. Make sure it's checked. Then you can just grab this bottom right box and just drag it and make it bigger. We don't, we're not going to worry about our size right now. Now, if you'll see all the solid colors, if you don't like the way that looks, you can click Show Outlines Only, and that's what it'll show. That's personal preference. You can do whatever you want. Now, we're not going to worry about sizing this for our project yet. We're going to add a last name down here. First, I'm going to center this on my page. I'm going to use my horizontal and vertical align buttons over here so that my project is centered. And now we need to pick a font and type our text. Your text tool is the capital T. And over here are all of the fonts that you have available to you. Now, I already know which font I want to use, but if I didn't, we could try several. But I want to use Times New Roman. So if I type a T, it's going to take me to the T's so I don't have to scroll through all of my fonts. I have hundreds of them. And Times New Roman is right here. And I also want to use the bold function, so I'm going to go ahead and click that now. Then just come click on your mat. I'm going to put my caps lock on. I'm going to type the last name that I'm going to use. I'm going to come back over here for my selection tool, and I'm going to make this bigger. I'm going to click my horizontal align. Okay, and see if I like that or not. I think I want the name to still be a little bit bigger. Now, I'm trying to select it, and I can't. You could go through and change the order of the layers, but the easiest way is if you'll come over here to your layers box, and just click on the one that you want that will select it for you. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I still have my key proportions check, so it's doing it proportionately. I think I went a little bit too big. Now if we want to zoom in, go to view, and we're going to say actual size. Then you have to scroll to get to your word. But see how now I can tell I'm out wider than that, and I really don't want to be, so I'm going to select it again and make it a little bit smaller. it to window. Okay, center it again. Now, if I decided I don't like that font, I can um, view how some others would look. I'm going to go back to my type tool. Then I'm going to double click on my word and now see how it's highlighted with that color. Now if I come over here, I'm at Times New Roman, but I can click on another one and it'll change it. Then I can use my arrow keys and just scroll through and I can see if there's one that I like better. But I, I want to use Times New Roman. I already know that, so I'm going to go back and select that again. And I like how that looks. I think I'm going to move it up just a little. So I'm going to use my nudge buttons over here. Basically, I'm pretty happy with how that is. So now I'm going to draw a box around the entire thing. Come up to the upper left corner and just hold your mouse button down. And I'm going to group it. Object group and now we can size it however we want. This is still changing it proportionately and you can either change it proportionately or you can actually type in the actual dimensions that you want. You have to know what size project you're putting it on. I'm going to put this on a glass frame. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do an 8 by 10. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I want this small enough so that I'm going to have a little bit of a margin around it so I don't want it 8 by 10. So here is my width. You can actually just type in. I'm going to take the Keep Proportions button off now. 
because I don't want it to scale proportionately. I want to do it how I want to do it. And just to show you now that that's not clicked, I can shrink it like that. I mean, it doesn't look good, but I can. You can do it however you want. You could make it longer this way, which comes in handy if you have an odd shaped or just a different shaped project. Everything's not square. So if I'm going to do an 8 by 10, I'm going to want it at least an inch narrower. So I'm going to do 9. I'm going to type that in my width and do this by 7 and hit enter. And there that should fit nicely within my frame. So now I'm just going to move it over in the upper left hand corner. I don't want to waste vinyl and I'm all ready to cut. I'm going to change my blade setting to 3 and my pressure to 2 because I've tested my machine and that's what works well. I'm going to load my mat into my machine then I'm going to click the little scissors and it will cut the project for me.